Good morning and good afternoon and good evening. Whenever you're listening to this, welcome back to our podcast, Hidden Points, where we where we cover our hidden pointers regarding all things career services, professional development, and jump starting your professional lives. Yeah, we are your co-hosts today. My name is Kevin Huang. I am a career coach for the College of Health and Public Service at University of North Texas. So if you haven't seen our episode already, um, this is who I am again. I work specifically with majors related to criminal justice, emergency administration planning, uh, urban policy and planning, as well as nonprofit leadership studies. Mm -hmm. And my name is Maya McMillan, and I am a career coach for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences here at the University of North Texas, Go Mean Green. I see media arts majors as well as Converge Broadcast Media majors who would be working in a studio such as this one. And I've currently taken on communication studies, which is what I pursued in undergrad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Previous episode, it was Halloween. I'm pretty sure it was Halloween. Yes. Uh, we talked a little <laughs> bit about what the Career Center is, what we offer, and also kind of our story and background connecting to professional development as well as career development, as mm -hmm. well as how we interact with Career Centers across different universities during our undergrad time and also our graduate time. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to talk about your journey, and your journey starts it now, starts now right it starts the moment you step into uh, maybe a collegiate campus. degree a campus mm -hmm. um, anywhere and it starts now and we want to talk a little bit about that our journey as well um, and help you understand there's different perspectives and methods and paths to get to where you want to be right yeah and the reality is that you don't start your journey or your career when you graduate you don't wait till you're you know, received your degree, done with school to start looking for jobs, getting experiences, mm -hmm. pursuing internships. You do that as soon as you start college because the reality is that you can get those experiences in school. You get those experiences on the campus um, or off campus, but it, it starts now. Regardless of your classification, if you just got to UNT, this is your first semester, it starts now. If you're graduating next semester or this semester. Hopefully you would have got a little bit further in your career, but if not, we're here to help you. Um, so don't put it off. Start you know, thinking about those things now. Yeah, right now. And especially I feel like when students come into college, they start to think, oh, I'm here for just my education, just to get my degree, and then I'm out. I'm gonna find a job mm -hmm. instantly. But then we find a lot of issues and troubles with students finding jobs if they've only been here for the degree right because a lot of employers are looking for external opportunities and experiences on the resume mm -hmm. um, so that they can be confident to hire this person whether it be involved involvement on campus or even just internships externships practicums yes. um, shadowing all of these experiences culminate into a holistic understanding of what it means to work for a certain position so mm -hmm. that's where these four years are really important and pivotal to a student's experience to essentially be a really good hire mm -hmm. and good candidate for the future so right and even if you feel like you can't get the experience you need for like the industry you're pursuing on a campus that is not true there's um, opportunities and jobs on campus not just UNT but any university um, for any industry in a career field if you're pursuing social media you can you know um, gain, acquire a social media job here on campus. If you're interested in doing project management, um, work at the Student Money Management Center where you can help plan events and, you know, um, financial learning events for students. You can get any experience in any industry um, on this campus or on whatever campus you're on. It's just a matter of changing your outlook and actually seeing yourself in that role and in that industry, kind of like you're manifesting. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that, that is essentially what we want to talk about. The journey starts now. And we want to talk about kind of some stories about our journey and how we started and how we could probably help you all <laughs> improve your method of working through that journey right. um, through the resources that are here and offered to you. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me, for example, 
I struggle with like connecting to resources and understanding what that looks like for me coming as a first generation student. But I'll let Maya tell a little bit about her story and how she got into working on a resume, but also other things. Yeah. So when I first, um, I guess, first, first created a resume, it was with the help of my dad. And I'm pretty sure he helped me make mine based on what his resume looked like. So I don't remember if he gave me a template. He probably did, or he probably gave me his resume and I just replaced the information. But that's kind of where I started. Um, I was in high school at the time mm. because I was applying for like my first job ever, part-time job. First job, what was I was it? like 16. I was working at a place called Monkey Joe's in Houston. And it was like a kid's, um, a kid's bounce house, basically, full of inflatables. Ooh. And I was working birthday parties, um, had to wear the mascot outfit, but that's that's a whole nother <laughs> story. But that was my first job. And um, I'm pretty sure if I were to look at the resume I had then, I'm sure it probably looked a mess. <laughs> Not because it was my dad's, but just mm -hmm. because things have changed so much mm -hmm. since then. That was 2014. 2015 mm -hmm. so um, the things that employers look for on a resume now are you know different from what we were taught or expected then um, so that was that was my resume and by the time I got to college it did change and I um, got a bit more work experience I was able to tweak it a bit more so you know constantly trying to improve it in any way that I can and um, and so yeah, so my resume now is a lot different from what it was then, but that's kind of how I, I guess, got started in you know like my internship search or when I was looking for um, my first job on campus at UTSA. And I'm pretty sure my resume was less than a page, but I know the thing I struggled with then, which a lot of students struggle with now, it's you know not completely out of the ordinary. That was. Um, knowing like how to elaborate on your experiences and like basically what content to include on your resume like the verbiage mm -hmm. um you know not everyone likes writing so especially when it comes to like writing about like okay what did you do in the job what did that look like i think i was probably very vague with it so um it wasn't until i elaborated on that and did what we call quantifying our experiences um, so including numbers you know detailing the size of the team I worked on how much of something I did how little of something I did that's when I started hearing from employers and actually um, like getting contacted for interviews mm -hmm. yeah for sure and that's definitely something we we say to students all the time just being mm -hmm. more detailed because if you say like, oh, I managed a team uh, on just one line, what right. does that mean, right? How many people did you work with? What kind of projects were you working on? What did you accomplish? And right. that's kind of what people want to see and, mm -hmm. and see the experience of, but um, yeah. resumes definitely, <laughs> definitely need a lot of work and we're here for that, right? As career coaches, we're here to help you and kind of be that third party perspective who is not uh, afraid of telling you the truth and where you can improve it because that's what we're here for to help you succeed mm -hmm. um, as students so for my side of it i am a first generation college student i feel like i've said this in a past um, podcast before but Ooh. my parents <laughs> gotta plug in that podcast check it out okay yes. um with my experiences my parents um, they own a restaurant. They've been within the restaurant business. Um, very, very small um, local restaurant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not college ed educated at all. So going through college was a different kind of path for me. Mm -hmm. Understanding it, seeing what I needed to do and what resources that were available was really difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I think for my first resume, I didn't have help with my resume. Um, my parents never had a resume. I don't think they did. No, I don't think they did because um, they just kind of said, hey, I have the experience to cook. Hire me or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That was back then. But a lot of my resume took a lot of years of just kind of working with other folks, colleagues, and just trying to compare it with others and looking online, right? It's, it's tough to do that by yourself. It can be Very. a little bit lonely, I think. Mm -hmm. and and daunting and daunting right yeah and if you don't have resources or support right it might be really really tough to mm -hmm. really find out what's wrong and what's right 
in what direction you want to head towards, right? Mm -hmm. um, for me, I barely had any experiences on my resume. <laughs> I think I did some like restaurant waitering jobs. Ooh. Yeah, so I mean, I've always wanted to be a waiter. Did you? It's, yes. It's carrying dishes is pretty. <laughs> I've Pretty always difficult. wanted to balance the thing. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, um, go for it. I, if you want to do that, go for it. Get but tips, right? You can get tips, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that was kind of my experience. I didn't have anything related to I had an economics degree in undergrad, but didn't have anything related to that. So it was kind of hard for me to look for an internship because I didn't have anything to back myself up with. Mm -hmm. And also my description of what I did for <laughs> being a waiter or even just working in a restaurant industry was not very detailed at all, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, like just vague. giving numbers, quantifying things, mm -hmm. and really showcasing that you understand the job or um, just details about that, right? And it was right. very vague. I, somehow I got eventually a student job on campus, which is, I think, one of the most underrated I think methods of getting experience here on campus during your undergraduate degree yes. getting an on-campus job allows you the perk of just a flexible job mm -hmm. but also the ability to work with a supervisor who is caring of you because you're a student they know you're that a student part. right that that's, part that's definitely something that is an advantage for student employment mm -hmm. um, and then you can always use them as a reference right and all those yes. things add up to how you get a job and how you start applying to things yeah and i didn't have any of that mm -hmm. until later on i was seeking out more opportunities on campus, I found a student job, and then I was like, hey, I need an internship really quick. It's mm -hmm. like my junior year, I don't have anything, I'm about to graduate in a year, right? right? It's like, oh shoot, panicking. what do I do? Right, mm -hmm. I'm just like panicking. And then I just tried to email as many people as possible, and luckily, mm -hmm. someone answered back from a department on campus and said, hey, yeah, let's meet. Let's talk about an internship opportunity that we have. And right. then hopefully we can have some student employment lined up for you after, which it did, which led to this job eventually, which is a whole story. I'm not going to tell you right now, mm -hmm. but you never know what might happen with opportunities for reaching out, networking, where you can find your future, essentially. Yes. Right. And um, to kind of go off of like you mentioned your serving experience, um, like being a waiter, it all boils down to like even if you think – you know, all I did was like serve food or work in fast food, and that's not gonna get me anywhere. You know, employers don't care about that, not true. Like, it all boils down to your outlook on the job and how serious you took it, but also like, what did you learn from that job? Like, if you, if you are very vague about, you know, the experience and the job itself on your resume and you just see it as, oh, it was just fast food, part-time job. I didn't learn anything. Employers will feel that through, you know, the interview or through your resume and they'll think, okay, well, if they didn't take this job seriously, mm -hmm. how serious are they going to take this you know, job in their industry. So mm -hmm. it all boils down to just like speaking highly about the job, even if you hated it. Do not let, you don't want to communicate that to the employer. So they don't have to know how bad the conditions were. They don't have to know, you know, that your boss didn't care that you were a student. Just try to, you know, indicate that you have that positive outlook on the job and that you learned what you needed to um, in the experience at the end of the day. Because the skills will still help you in the next job and they're still transferable. It's still customer service at the end of the day. Mm, yeah, for sure. And all of these things add up, right? We mm -hmm. mentioned this journey starts now. It does. All of these things add up. If you did like a high school job in fast food, that adds up to you having experience working in a professional manner, mm -hmm. which leads into a potential um, good outlook for an internship you might apply to, right? It shows that you already worked professionally, you worked with a team, you worked with people, mm -hmm. right? Depending on what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But that gives you leverage to go for that internship, which will add on again, you get an internship and then get another internship, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. which will talk about the direction of where you can probably go towards if you're looking to start your journey now, if you're a first year now, even if you're a second year, third year, fourth year, mm -hmm. your journey, can start whenever, right? Starts, but yeah. we're hoping to reach you early on yes. so that we can 
kind of get your head around understanding that it starts immediately mm -hmm. um, once you step foot onto campus. We don't want you to wait last minute till you're a senior about to graduate and then you're you know panicking that you don't have the experience you need. We want to you know catch you early basically. So yeah so for um, so we're kind of gonna kind of break it down through classification so like painting the picture of what you know, starting your journey now will look like as a first year, second year, and so on. Mm -hmm. So as a freshman, um, what you could be doing now while in school is getting involved on campus, um, joining organizations, volunteering, mm -hmm. um, even leading those organizations if you're able to as a first year student, but just being involved on campus in a way that is not just going to class. Because the reality is, is that you know, you you can have a 4.0 and make great grades across the board, but employers don't want to just see grades. Mm -hmm. Some employers don't even want to see grades at all, but they don't. Yes, you need the degree, but they they want to see what job, what work experience you have at the end of the day. So get involved, um, you know, start with a simple part-time job on campus. If you've never had a job prior to college, which is fine, it's very common, don't allow that to be your situation by your last year. So if you don't have work experience before college, try to start with your first job being on that campus. If you don't have a car like I did in undergrad mm -hmm. and you couldn't get off campus or couldn't get around, you should especially start with something on campus where you have the flexibility, you have a means of getting to that job um, on time because employers will still you know, see that as valuable experience. Mm -hmm, for sure, yeah, and if you would like to do volunteer opportunities like you mentioned too we have a lot of those on campus where a lot you can just engage with a different community and try to get experience in that way as well so mm -hmm. that's kind of the first year if you're able to be a leader of an organization in your first year well congrats like that's really impressive but yeah. typically Very that'll impressive. lead towards maybe your second year your third year fourth year continuing mm -hmm. um, where you're going to get more experience and be more involved in a community or organization that you're really invested in mm -hmm. so let's say a second year you're going to stay more involved on campus because we want to see involvement even if it's not right the most relevant to your major or your, maybe your career field it shows that you have an active interest in being engaged with the community and how to communicate with people mm -hmm. right so maybe going into that second year you're looking into leadership in a student org and you're mm -hmm. trying to be more participatory in all of the things that are related on campus right um, then you start to think about mm, what am i going to do for my career Mm -hmm. So like, what can I do with my major? That's something that you can always ask us and figure out. Like maybe you've enjoyed being in this class and this class, but you didn't like the class that you originally signed up for. That could be a ch transition in career mm -hmm. potentially, right? Um, That's and right. then even thinking about internships, because once you start thinking about your career, you have to start thinking about internships coming up because those are gonna come up really quick. Once yes. you're in your second year, you have to start thinking about doing one really soon. Yeah. and then prepare for essentially job hunting in two more years, right? Mm -hmm. That's scary. And great example, um, when I uh, got an interview and like acquired my first internship, they asked me more about my student org involvement than they did about my actual work experience because I had work experience, but they probably like briefly covered that and then was mm. like, okay, what's this org about? What are you doing in it? And I was surprised, but... I was prepared to answer those questions. What were some of the student orgs that you were in? Uh, I was in undergrad. Yeah, 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 for sure. I was, so I had a student associate position on campus that worked with all of the Asian Pacific Islander and Desi American orgs on campus. So okay. it was more like, and I was a part of different orgs on campus, but mm -hmm. I liked my job in that I held events and programs that brought in all of the orgs together right. to essentially have you know a good time, whether it be educational or mm -hmm. it could be just social related, but some of them would be like Asian American Association mm -hmm. or Asian American University, you know, a lot of different organizations related to my identities right. and that connected back to me as a person. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was a part of, um, an org that was kind of like you said aligned with my identity it was called women women of honor um at utsa and it was for basically um all the women 
student, students, females on campus who were um, women of color. Mm. And it was a community mm. service-based organization. Mm. So all we did was volunteering. And mm. that was a quick way for me to get involved fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially if you feel mm. like you don't have the work experience. I think volunteer experience is definitely also underrated mm -hmm. for putting on your resume and also talking about it. I mean, you learn so many life um, just goals and also just experiences that is going to stick with you for the rest of your life, I think. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then our outlook, there's three, there's two more years plus mm -hmm. if you stay longer, but yes. with the third year, you're going to have an internship somewhere, right? Right. You have to, or most likely have to, mm -hmm. right? If an employer is looking into your resume, they'll probably want to see an re internship. They will. Some might be okay with that one, but an internship is definitely a plus on your resume mm -hmm. um, because it shows that you have specific experience in the field that you're going into, whatever it might be. Yes. Right. And um, to go off of what Kevin said, some majors do require it to graduate, mm -hmm. but some um, some don't. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't required to have one, that's a good thing because you don't have to worry about it, but we still would encourage you to have one because an internship is seen as a job at the end of the day. It's almost, you want to treat it like it's a job um, and it's still seen as valuable experience. It's a great stepping stone to that next part in your career. So you're not just going from part-time to straight full-time because internships can be full-time or part-time mm -hmm. but they're great for you know making that like connection that gateway yeah exactly and mm -hmm. i know a lot of folks that transition from an internship to a full-time position right mm -hmm. after undergrad so yes. those are also good opportunities to even get a job like instantly yes. sometimes they'll even offer you a job right after an internship if they really found you to be a very great part of their team and they mm -hmm. want to see you thrive in the next part right exactly oh i forget the statistics i should know this but a large percentage of people who um, are hired in companies it starts with having known someone already mm -hmm. or having already <clears throat> worked in that company so they know your face and they know what you've done and everyone there is familiar with who you are versus like a total stranger coming from the out quote unquote outside but yeah um, so yeah, definitely start with internships. Um, you know, before you start your internship search, work on your resume. We can help with that. Um, the earlier you fix your resume and tweak it, mm. the the um, less you have to worry about doing that later, basically. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. And with your resume, it's almost as if <clears throat> it's your first impression with a company or mm -hmm. an employer or a hiring manager or a recruiter, right? If they don't see who you are physically, then that's the first thing they see, mm -hmm. your resume. And who you are is what is on that piece of paper or electronically that piece of paper. Exactly. So it's important to make it perfect almost. Mm -hmm. um, and just to correct all grammar issues, spacing issues, everything needs to be No stale resumes. Perfect. No stale, <laughs> yeah. No stale <laughs> resumes. Um, yeah. It just has to be... I guess a perfect image of you before they even see you. Right. And even if you, you know, even if you think, oh, they're not going to notice a little misspelling or they're not going to notice, um, you know, this word being capitalized and that one being lowercase when it should. Like, if you think they're not going to notice those little things, they do. Because the reality is, it's like Kevin and I sometimes sit on um, hiring committees for, you know, people who are like applying for positions in our office. And when we look at, you know, the resumes, even if they're well, um, way more experienced than we are, we still notice the little, the little things. So never assume that an employer is just going to um, completely overlook that or, you know, mm. just not ask about it. And if you read something on your resume and it doesn't make sense, we're kind of getting more into resumes because that could be another episode. But if you think they're not going to, if you see something that doesn't make sense, it's not going to make sense to them either. Mm -hmm. So work on that um, sooner. And like Kevin said, um, doesn't hurt to have more than one leadership experience. The more the merrier. Um, to me, it just shows more experience. Yeah. And yeah transitioning into the fourth year your senior year by this point <clears throat> we would hope that you've um, completed an internship or are in the process of um, starting an internship mm. um, if you've already done one do another 
you can complete more than one internship mm -hmm. and um, and also just focus more during this time on your job search. So do you still want to work in the industry that you've been studying for four years now? Mm -hmm. Are you still passionate about that industry? Um, what specific job do you want after graduation? And if you don't know what that would be, um, check out our website. We have the resources for that, too. Yeah, that's a great point. And we talk about opportunities with the Career Center mm -hmm. um, to help you establish your journey and where it starts now, right? Right. So uh, some things, obviously, we've mentioned it and plugged it a lot. Meeting with your career coaches, which is invaluable to have someone look at all of your information <laughs> and connect it back to what you're trying to get to so mm -hmm. whatever job that might be whatever opportunity that might be internships etc yeah we are here for looking over everything that you have to bring to the table mm -hmm. uh, whether it be helping you through the search and looking on different um, platforms to find out what internship opportunities you have yeah um, or even more so that includes like resume reviews mm -hmm. cover letter reviews um, career outlook and looking into your internship options with us right uh, as well as connecting to our internship specialists in the career center where we can kind of figure out what opportunities employers are offering right now exactly mm -hmm. exactly because um because i'm spacing but the reality is don't wait last minute um you know seek our assistance as early as you can and mm -hmm. even if you catch us and you're like on your way out of school um, we'll still do the very best that we can to help you you know get that job um, say you graduate you still have access to all of our services you can still make appointments with us mm -hmm. we do have a career coach Amy who specializes in working with alumni specifically mm -hmm. so if you still need help in the areas of professional development, you could book with Amy and she would still, she's another career coach. Mm -hmm. So she would um, pretty much set you up for success mm -hmm. so that you feel good moving forward. Um, and yeah, and just don't wait last minute. Um, don't rely heavily on your grades to get you far in your career. Focus more on your experiences and what you've done. All our grades are, are important too. Definitely mm -hmm. important. We recommend if you have a yeah. GPA of 3.0 or higher, I want to say 3.3 or higher, mm -hmm. put it on your resume. So if you're excelling in your, your education, right. we're not going to put bash that down it. towards you, right? right? So that's just an added cherry on top of everything, right? Yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> so if you can be involved, be engaged, have internship experience, have professional experience, and do well in your education, you're well on your way to finding success mm -hmm. in your job search. Very uh, much. For the most part. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Summed it up perfect. So I think that's about our time for the most part. We'll just end it here. Yeah. Thanking you all for listening in on another episode. If you haven't listened to our other episode, check it out. Mm -hmm. It's about the Career Center and our resources on campus. Um, as well as who we are as people in our story. In our backgrounds. In our backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, look out for our next episode coming soon. Yes, we don't know which. We have a variety of topics we're going to cover. We haven't picked our next topic just yet. But you might see a special guest. We might bring someone else on to join us um, who specializes in the topic that we will discuss. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, for sure. And then we do have an update, and it's related to what we talked about today mm -hmm. we have an unpaid internship scholarship that's yes. a part of the career center mm -hmm. and unt which is something you're free to sign up to you don't have to sign up for it but that application opens up actually today mm -hmm. and will end on january 30th so if you're looking for an opportunity to go into an internship that you really feel would inclined to or connected to or could help you mm -hmm. but they're not paying you then we have a scholarship that might offer the compensation <laughs> that you feel you need, right? Yes, yes, definitely. It's a great opportunity. We offer the scholarship every semester, so um, you'll probably hear more about it over the next few weeks, um, if not a month, because I know it's the end of the semester. But yeah, um, and then, so you mentioned the dead, did you mention the deadline? Yeah. You did? Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so um, this is the last week of classes for the fall 2022 semester. Mm -hmm. So we just want to wish every everyone, every student, the best of luck on, you know, wrapping up their classes. Finals are next week. So mm -hmm. um, we probably will also wish you best luck on your finals in our next episode. But, you know, just take things easy. Take it day by day. Pace yourself and, um, and 
don't be afraid to take a nap. Yes, <laughs> naps are great. Finals are hard, so um, <laughs> you know, are hard. push through. If you, yeah, just take your time and and take it easy. You got this. We believe in you. I mean, if you ever want to talk to us, mm-hmm. on, you know, after exams or anything, um, any time after you're not stressed, yeah, go for it. We're, We're here. here for you. And we're we're here until you. December 23rd, specifically. Something like that. Some of us <laughs> might be on vacation, but... <laughs> yes. we. So when y'all finish finals, we still have about a week. Um, so you yeah. all can still see us, talk to us if you need to. Yep. Sounds good. Well, with that, we're done with this episode. Thanks for tuning in, listening. I am, I guess, I have never done this kind of <laughs> outro. I am Kevin Huang, one of the career coaches. And I'm Maya McMillan, one of the other career coaches. And we are... Hidden Hidden points. points. There you go. All right, all right, all right. I'll see you all (laughs) next time. Bye.